think that's something that every superhero should have is the ability to transform somebody's state of mind that's all it is ability to transform somebody's state of mind so let's say you are a pro pro example i can give you is like a fitness industry right so if you are in a position where you feel like you are not getting results and then you go in there and you tell them like hey if you do x y and z then you won't be able to get that at very first time somebody hears that advice they're not going to listen to you because first of all they don't know you they don't know what you can do even though you might be the expert but if you start to ask them a certain question why do they feel like they cannot do it Heroes are an inspiring group of people. Every one of them, from the larger-than-life comic book heroes you see on the big silver screen to the everyday heroes that let us live the privileged lives we do. Every hero has a story to tell. The doctor saving lives at your local hospital. The war veteran down the street who risked his lives for our freedom. The police officers and firefighters who risk their safety to ensure ours. Every hero is special and every story worth telling. But there is one class of heroes that I think is often ignored. The entrepreneur. The creator. The producer. The ones who look at the problems in this world and think to themselves, you know what? I can fix that. I can help people. And I can make a difference. Then they go out and do exactly that by creating a new product or introducing a new service. Some go on to change the world. Others make a world of difference to their customers. Welcome to The Hero Show. Join us as we pull back the masks of the world's finest heropreneurs and learn the secrets to their powers, their success, and their influence. So you can use those secrets to attract more sales, make more money, and experience more freedom in your business. I'm your host, Richard Matthews, and we are on in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to The Hero Show. My name is Richard Matthews, and I am live on the line today with Mark Kumar. Mark, are you there? I'm right here. Awesome. So glad to have you here, Mark, even despite all of the wonderful COVID-19 crisis we have going on in our world. Um, we can still get on and do these cool interviews and hopefully inspire people a little bit. Now... Um, before we get into uh, the actual interview, I'm going to introduce you for guests who, or our listeners who may not know who you are. Um, Mark is a lifestyle entrepreneur, and he is the host of the Mark Kumar podcast, which you can find by just Googling his name, Mark Kumar, and you should be able to find that podcast. I was recently a guest on your show, so thank you for having that, me on there and coming back onto my show. To start with, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're known for? What's your business like? What is it that you offer to this world? Ah, uh, my business is basically I help entrepreneurs who are looking to create online businesses and I help them create digital assets, digital assets being whether it be a digital product, uh, membership site or uh, video course, things of that nature. So that way they can utilize their time spent with their family, their loved ones and have freedom to choose whatever they want to do. That's what I try to help other entrepreneurs. Awesome. How long have you been uh, doing that? How long have you been in that business? Oh my God, almost a decade or more. It feels like forever. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's about as long as I've been doing that, doing that kind of work. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's been a fun 10 years, hasn't it? Yeah, it definitely has. I learned a whole lot of things and met a lot of nice, uh, amazing people, including yourself, obviously, you know, and it's been an interesting uh, learning journey and I'm looking forward to what, to what I can do in the next five years. Awesome. So my next question for you has to do with your origin story, right? We talk on this show all the time. Every hero has their origin story. It's where you started to realize that maybe you were different, that maybe you had superpowers and maybe you could use them to help other people. How did you get started on this journey of entrepreneurship? Uh, it's actually it's a really interesting and a funny and a coincidental, if you want to call it that. Uh, it started when I, in my first business, when I was doing the photography, where I just got a, my camera uh, as a Christmas present, and then I started taking pictures. And then one thing led to another. I started doing this side business in addition to my job. And I was doing portraits for my family members. And one time, my family member said, hey, I'll pay you if you take pictures of my family. I was like, what, you gonna pay me for something that I do for fun? Sure, no problem, you know? And then I started doing that. I was like, uh, wow, that was a wild moment for me. It's like, oh my God, somebody's gonna actually pay me to do something that will actually do it for free. And then one thing led to another, I did the family member uh, pictures and then they turned around and told somebody else. And then they I had my little portrait business and then went on to doing the weddings. And that's not where the whole thing started for me. What it started was like, I was only doing that for like three months from going from 
getting a camera, doing a wedding, wedding and portraits within three months. But the next phase where were like other photographers who were like, hey, I like the way you shoot. I like the way you how to communicate with other people. I like the way you how you can have other people, a stranger, pose in a way that they feel very comfortable. I want to learn how to do that. I was like, oh, wow, wait a second. I'm onto something. So I'm doing something I love and then other people are appreciating and they want to learn how to do that. So what I did was I got on a webinar that was like my go-to webinar where I was literally sitting on in my home and my boxers or my shorts and t-shirt on it. And that's when I realized, why God, this is something powerful. And at that moment, I'm like, I need to learn how to do this thing. And then when I first did my webinar, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> like literally had no idea. At one point in during the webinar, my mic went out for like good 10 minutes and no one could hear me. And someone chatted me like, hey, we can't hold you. And I was going on with my whole GPO presentation. I was like, oh, wow. And then despite of all of that, everybody was helped like really surprised and then they actually found their information valuable and then and that's when i'm like i gotta learn how to do this uh, the webinar thing i did that for a while and then automated the whole thing where i recorded it and then shot an email out to people with my email list and so on and so forth so that was like the quote i'm like yeah that was interesting and now here i am talking to you nice so you you actually started with a, a sort of a passion business and turned that into a uh, uh online course and sales business Absolutely. That's and awesome. Like, yeah, I actually, uh, um, I, I paid my way through college with a camera, um, camera very much like the, uh, the one I'm using here for this interview, um, doing portraits and weddings and stuff. Um, I discovered, however, I didn't like it as a business, so I didn't continue. <laughs> <laughs> I like it much better as a hobby. Okay. It's so. like one of those things, like if you're like a people person, like uh, when I like used to do wedding and portrait, whatever, Everybody, or at least my family members, not everybody who I was my client, they were like, oh my God, you like this guy, like a little kid in a candy store. You have a camera, you're doing all these weird things to make other people more comfortable. And then you get them this, I guess I just have this personality where like, I could just get you to do whatever I want. And then people love the pictures and the outcome come out of it. So it's like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I had the uh, I had the talent for the pictures and I could do the whole talking to people thing, but I just didn't like the whole aspect of uh of like it, your creative work is is like someone else's like it's i don't know what you call it it's like the, the rest of their life is going to be captured by that moment and so they're very picky about certain things and i didn't like it i was like it's not a, it's not as fun if it's if it's a, a business and not just a creative outlet for me so i didn't continue <laughs> yeah, I mean, what it is like, like especially in the wedding photography or any photography business, like it's all emotional based. If you take yeah. too long to deliver their pictures, then that's where the technicality comes in, and then your good picture will comes will look into like going a bad picture as compared to let's just say on a January first you took the pictures right, and then within the first two weeks you can give them pictures and the average picture they will love it because it's still in that emotional state. So it's like a little yeah. psychology behind it, but you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, um, back in the day when I was doing it was like pre-internet and social media. So like nowadays, I can imagine photographers like you have to have your pictures up that evening for the uh, on the Instagram page for the the bride and whatnot. I was like, man, it's got to be a tough business nowadays. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. You know, just like anything else, you know, if it's yeah, knowing your clients. I was, uh, I remember, um, my, my favorite, uh, favorite thing I did, I did some math, um, you know, the little memory cards you stick in your camera. Mm -hmm. The first memory card I bought was one half of a gigabyte. Um, so it was 512 megabytes and it cost me $110 for that. Um, and the last memory card I bought was 64 gigabytes and it's like, you know, it's like this big, it's like a little miniature thing. Um, so it's like a hundred times smaller than the one that I bought when I was in college. And it cost me like $23 and I did the math on it. I think it's something like 8,000 times cheaper per gigabyte um, than what I paid for per gigabyte in college. <laughs> uh, yeah, like if you compare that with this memory card with the film, 36 pictures, you know, and one time and you get the half a mega, half a gig of memory card, which is like, you know, obviously if time goes, yeah. you're going to be more, having more options, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy what, uh, what technology has done for that. So my, uh, my next question for you has to do with your own superpower, right? This is what you do or build or off this world that helps solve problems for people. The things that you use to help slay this world's villains. And what I've been framing this for my, my guests lately has been, um, if you look at all the skills you have in your business, right? You'd probably have one skill if you really 
looked at them that energizes the rest, right? The thing that, that makes the other skills possible. Um, you know, your zone of genius, so to speak. Do you know what that is for you? Absolutely. That's something that every superhero should have is the ability to transform somebody's state of mind. That's all it is. Ability to transform somebody's state of mind. So let's say you are a pro pro example I can give you is like the fitness industry, right? So if you are in a position where you feel like you are not getting results, and then you go in there and you tell them like, hey, if you do X, Y, and Z, then you won't be able to get that. At very first time, somebody hears that advice, they're not gonna listen to you. Because first of all, they don't know you. They don't know what you can do, even though you might be the expert. But if you start to ask them a certain question, why do they feel like they cannot do it? So it's like a playing a little therapist, like, hey, why do you feel like you can't do it? And then sooner or later, they're gonna tell you why I can't do it. And the reason they're gonna give you is gonna be completely BS. It's, it's just their own way of getting in the ways like, hey, I can't do it because of X, Y, and Z. And then you, then you ask like, why can't you do it X, Y, Z? Because blah, 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 whatever. So the way that I communicate with other people, like I ask them a very action-oriented questions. Like going back to the whole fitness thing, I can't lose weight because what's the reason? And then I go further. So one of the reasons would be because I don't have time right? Or my schedule is too busy, things like that. Okay, how much time do you actually need to work out? Uh, 30 minutes. You don't have 30 minutes and 24 hours? How much time do you actually spend on Facebook scrolling or watching YouTube video? Uh, typical answer, like two, three hours. So you can find 30 minutes out of the 24 hour period and then work on yourself. That's number one, right? And then you label it with like what benefit you're going to get out of it so typically like mm -hmm. hey if the person is single right if you want to get a nice gorgeous beautiful girl who wants to be with you don't you think that something will be able you'll be able to get that if you are more shaped not only just because you look great because you all be, you will be able to do things when you go out on a date so you attach emotional land to it. So that's another benefit. So that state of mind happens within a, believe it or not, one second, literally in one second. And once that state of mind happens, the results comes in. So that's the kind of so, transmission. So that's the, uh, the, the superpower is, is learning how to, I like to call it learning how to ask better questions, right? So when you ask better questions, people get better answers. Yep. So your superpower is knowing how to ask those better questions to people so you can change their state of mind. Absolutely. Yes. That's one of them. <laughs> awesome. So the flip side of a superpower then of course is the fatal flaw, right? Just like Superman had his kryptonite or Batman's not really a superhero. He's just really dedicated and ninja. What would you say your fatal flaw is and what you struggled with in your business to, you know, that's kept you from growing and more importantly, how have you um, dealt with that in your own business, in your own life? So someone else who might be struggling with the same fatal flaw might learn from you. Uh, one of them that I still to this day, sometimes still struggle to is ability to say no. <laughs> it's like yeah. when, I, when I start a project, I normally now I don't start a project until I know I can 100% commit to it. Like in the past, I will start 20 different projects at the same time. And then I will spend literally a lot of time on every single one of them because I wanted to succeed. But nowadays I have to like, okay, I start a project knowing the fact if it's going to transform other people's life in a great massive scale. Otherwise, there's no point for me. And then sometimes as a, how to say, how hardcore entrepreneurs like yourself, like me and other people out there, we don't want to say no because we, we don't like that word. But at the same time, we have to transition into like, hey, I can say no, not, not say no, but I can say it not right now. I may come back to it later on, but not right now. That has been the struggle for me. Like I can't say no, but if I'll say, okay, I'm not saying no, but I'll come back later on two, three months from now, if I still feel strong enough that that thing is gonna help a lot of people in the long run. Yeah, yeah. I've actually heard a number of times that uh, um, the most successful entrepreneurs are the most skilled at saying no. Um, and it's a hard thing to get good at because especially as you're growing your business, you make money when you say yes, you don't make money when you say no. Um, and we need to put food on the table. So it's like you have to, you know, you have to, uh, um, 
you have to say yes a lot in the beginning. And then as you grow and get better and really hone in on your skills and what you're doing for people, it gets easier to say no in your business um, and realize, hey, this is the best fit for me or this isn't a good fit for me, that kind of thing. Right. Can I just say, add something also onto that? It's like when you're saying like how, when, how, when to say no, because, you know, when somebody who's starting out, people who listen and say like, hey, I need to put food on the table. So therefore I, says, I need to say yes to everything that comes your way. But the thing that I would caution you, I think about it, the amount of time that you're going to spend, the thing that you're saying yes to it. If it's going to take, let's say, if you are a uh, married man with couple, um, you're a couple who has, let's just go with couple for now. How much time are you going to be able to spend within a 24 hour period on this one thing, working on it, and then not spend enough time with your significant other? So try to balance that, you know, that's the key thing. But so if you can say no to this one thing and you can spend an extra two hours with your significant other, that will also add a lot of value to your personal life. And at the end of the day, you're going to be a lot more happier as compared to if you made extra $200. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my solution to that in my business has been to uh, hire people and then I can say <laughs> yes to more things and it doesn't take more of my time. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's uh that's been the big biggest win in my business over the last year or so is learning how to uh have people to delegate to and then learning how to delegate um so you can say yes more often and not have it impact your life balance kind of thing right i mean if you have the ability like yourself you look at hire other people that that's great you know you can say yes to everything that comes your way because you're going to delegate it so you're at you're at a manager level like hey you could do this you could do that you could do that and all stuff but if somebody yeah, who's yeah. starting out may not be in the same position but they're when it's, they hope to get to your position yeah it's still interesting too because you have to uh you still have to know what to say yes to and what to say no to but now instead of looking at your own capabilities you're looking at your team's capabilities and your team's time and like the other projects that everyone has on their plate so it like it's just the same problem compounded um <laughs> but yeah uh, it's just, so you, it's still just a different, to, you still have to know how to say no yeah just different level of no i guess <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely cool so I want to transition and talk a little about your common enemy, right? And your common enemy is in the frame of your clients. When you bring a client on to do the work that you do for them, um, imagine it like this. Your common enemy is the thing that like if you, you, run your, you run into this with every client and you sometimes wish if you had a magic wand, you could just wave it and make this like mindset or problem go away that you could get them better, cheaper, faster results every time if you didn't run into this roadblock, right? Run into this common enemy. What is that common enemy in your business? One of the common enemies is like when someone comes to me, what, 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 first what I do is I put them in the process like, hey, make sure we, you and I are on the right fit, meaning I can help you get what you want. All right, that's the number one. If I can't, then there is no point for me to spend time with you or you spend time with me. But once we figure out, okay, we're at the right place. And then the next thing what I do is that, hey, what result are you looking to get? That's the most critical thing. Forget the money part. If you are like coming to me and like, hey, money's more important, then I'm not your guy. I'm not the most, you know, the cheapest guy. I'm like probably the most expensive guy out there. But the thing that you want to make uh, have when you come to talk to me is like, hey, can you get me result? Number one. Number two, can you get me result faster? If you're not one of those two type, I, I we are not going to get along. If your thing is like, hey, I want to get the cheapest thing, and I want you to do X, Y, and Z, and then and I'm gonna give, give you more headache <laughs> and I, I will get all of this thing and then the very, very low price. I am not the guy for you, right? So yeah. I, I wanna work with somebody who is result oriented. Like I, I don't care about the money. I'll figure out how to get it if I don't have it, but I want this X, Y, and Z result. That's the most thing. And I think that is everyone should focus on result oriented clients because those are the ones who are serious. Because if you go to a cheaper route, like, hey, I'm going to pay you, let's say $200 for this one project. And they're like, oh, I'm going to go and go look for somebody else. These are clients, what I call as a coupon clients. No matter how low you go, they're going to be like, I'm going to go find somebody else. If you tell them like, hey, I'll do this for a dollar. Like, no, I'm going to go with somebody else who could do it for 50 cents. Like you don't mm -hmm. want to get to that point. And then, you know, that's, that's how I look at so, it. So the, uh, the, the common enemy is, is people who are not result oriented and yep. learning how to find clients or filter clients that are result oriented in your business. Yep. yep so what's, what's, your, what's your process nowadays for filtering clients and finding out whether or not they're going to be a result oriented client or someone who's always looking for a coupon or a deal, as you put it? 
what the way, the way that I do it is like I when they come into my let's just say a sales funnel if you will I they opt into my email let's just say let's look at an email funnel from that point away they come into my funnel I, I send them two three emails and then the first email will be just the information email hey I am this blah 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 second email will be hey we'll go watch this thing if they watched it then they have taken some kind of action third email will be like hey what can I do to help you reply back to this email so that's how I'm driving to take action and get results. And when they send me an email, they're going to state their problem. And then I'll answer back to them, hey, do X, Y, and C. Then you want to get this result. And then when you're done with that, then get email me back. And if they do that and they get the result, then I know they're a result-oriented person. As compared to you get in the first email, I tell you a little bit about me. Second email, watch this video, but you never watched it. Then this person is not for me or I'm not the right fit for that person. I really like that uh, that sort of flow of actually asking your customers to go do things or your potential customers to go do things and right. sort of prove themselves worthy of your your uh, uh, time and effort. Right, exactly. So that way, you know, I'm right fit for you, you're right fit for me, and then we can move forward. Otherwise, that's great. <laughs> nice. So the flip side of the common enemy then is if, you know, the common enemy is something you fight against, your driving force is what you fight for, right? So just like Spider-Man fights, fights to save New York or Batman fights to save Gotham or Google fights to index and categorize all the world's information. What is it that you fight for in your business? Oh, wow. I fight for freedom. <laughs> to have the ability or have the time to spend where I want to spend. Not because I want to go look for clients. I want to set up an automation systems where this one A thing is going to get me this, B is going to get me that, C is going to get me that. And as a result, all those systems, I will have the time to go on a vacation, spend time with my family, go talk to somebody else or watch a movie. So freedom is the most thing that I fight for. Like I want awesome. to be able to... And, go ahead. Can I say, let's, uh, I, I, I feel you there because my... Uh, my business name that I use for the back end of all of our business stuff is five freedoms. Okay. Um, and I talk about that pretty regularly that the, uh, the five freedoms um, that make up a free life are, you know, everyone knows that, you know, political freedom and spiritual freedom and financial freedom, but the ones most people miss time freedom, right? The ability to choose what to do with your time and location freedom, the ability to choose where you want to spend that time. Right. Um, and most people miss those two and they think that all they need is financial freedom, but you can build a huge business that does a lot of things that takes all of your time and locks you down into one spot and you're not free. So <laughs> absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, if you think about it or ask anybody, it doesn't matter who that person is, could be the poorest person or the, uh, uh, the richest person. The one thing in common, which which I call is the common currency, which is the most valuable currency throughout the world, no matter where you are, is time. Once you spend mm -hmm. it, you will never get it back. Absolutely. So you, you work on building, building your business in such a way that you can have the time freedom. Do you do the same thing for your clients where your goal is to focus on getting them their time back? Absolutely. And that's why I only focus on digital world rather than a physical world, because in a physical world, you're tied up with the inventory, customers, and then returns and all that stuff. But with the digital world, you set it up once, even if it takes you six months at most. Once you set it up and it's done, and then obviously once here and there, you need to make a tweak, but that's like a day or two is worth the work. But the rest of the another six months, you're good to go. Then yeah, you have that's time awesome. Back. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my, uh, my favorite things about the, uh, d the digital work that, uh, that we do for people is that it's, you know, you put the effort in at the beginning. Um, sometimes you put a lot of effort at the beginning, but um, it pays dividends for a long time. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Awesome. So my next question for you is more on the uh, practical line, right? So we call this the hero's tool belt, right? So maybe you have a big magical hammer like Thor or bulletproof vest like your neighborhood police officer, or nowadays maybe it's an N95 mask to keep you from getting the COVID-19. Um, or maybe you just really love how Evernote helps you organize your thoughts. What are some of the tools that you use in your business that you couldn't live without that really make it possible to do what you do? Uh, let's see. The top one will be definitely the Google Suite, their Google Doc, Excel. I mean, the Google Sheets and all that stuff. That would be the top level. That's number one. I cannot live without it. And their email system is awesome. And then number two would be my email marketing software that I customize it is proprietary to what I need it to do. And I built it and I use it and it works flawlessly. And then, you know, and that's that, and also my online store, which is the 
process, email, online store, customer, done. Those two, those things, have I have built it, customizable to my liking, because the way I want it. And if I don't have those, I'm, I'm, I'll be like really, really bad position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing too, because like some of the, uh, the online stores and being able to roll your own email stuff nowadays because of open source software and things like that, you have amazing starting points where you don't have to uh, become a full-fledged developer to build some of those things. Um, have you found that to be the case? Well, I don't want to say that I will be in that category because I myself, I'm a developer, web developer. Cause so I, you I are a full-fledged developer. I, I was at one point in time and I'm not only create businesses or software just for certain individuals or including myself and then people who i know i only created for them but otherwise i'm like no like my own email so uh, email marketing software i built it myself and on the back end side and all that stuff and my own uh, online store where i'm able to sell digital product courses online courses and then also uh there are other things there's a membership sites i built them myself so the reason why right, i did so it because go ahead and say so my my next question for you then if you're actually building developing these things from the ground up are you using like uh amazon's uh what do they call them the i'm gonna forget the name of it but like their hosting s service where yep. you can actually uh um host your stuff and scale them as you know as much as you need to actually that's one of the platform but the other thing that no one tells you about it which is a secret here is like far as your video file goes their Amazon is great. They're the best thing out there. However, if you want to keep your cost down, you can use YouTube to host your video, but not in a way where you embed it and it, when it goes to your platform, it will be looking like, hey, it's coming from YouTube. It will look like just like a regular video. It will have no logo, no marketing thing backing, going back to YouTube. Nice. So that's a secret that's that cool. I have utilized. Yeah. <laughs> So build your own YouTube player, but essentially, right? Well, the hosting is done by YouTube. So all the file is there. Like the actual, like for example, any YouTube video that is out there, I can grab the URL and import it into my system where it will only get the actual backend side of a YouTube URL and it'll have no display, no ads, no nothing related back to the YouTube. So it's a little that's, marketing, that's I cool. mean, the developer secret. Yeah. So that also keeps yeah, yeah. your costs down and then your profits up. Absolutely. Anytime you can uh, improve the margins, right? So you're not spending the uh, bandwidth dollars you spend when you host things on uh, Amazon S3 or something. Yes. <laughs> uh, so my next question for you is about your own personal heroes, right? So just like Fro had Gandalf or Luke had Obi-Wan or Re and Robert Kiyosaki had his rich dad. Who were some of your heroes? Were they real life mentors, speakers, authors, peers who were a couple of years ahead of you and how important were they to what you've accomplished so far in your business? Oh my God, the top guy I could think of is somebody, I think he's an international guy and his name is Tony Robin. He is the top person in my list. Who's so like, who taught me about self-development, always learning new things every single day. Up until now, I learned everything. Every day I learned something new. There hasn't been a day that gone by like I haven't learned since I got into this whole self-development thing. That's far as Tony Robbins goes. And the next thing is, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, Brian Tracy, far as sales training yeah. goes. Brian Tracy is amazing. His sales training is great. And then we got Jordan Belfort in terms of communication goals. He's the He, he had the movie out, The, the Wolf. Yeah, he's the Wolf of Wall Street, right? That's right. That's the one. And his tonality course is amazing. Once you learn that and you, once you go through that training course and you learn it, you'd be surprised how effectively you can communicate with somebody in a way that they pay attention to you 100% of the time. I mean, That's it doesn't awesome. get any better than that when you are talking to clients who are like, you know, sometimes when you talk to clients, you're saying one thing and they're in their own world, blah, blah, blah. What's going on? Let me see. Well, if I get home, I'm going to cook my dinner. Then I have to take care of my wife. And that's the conversation that's happening in their head. But his course teaches you how you can stop that conversation so they can listen to what you are saying and hold on to every single word you're saying. That's really good. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important skill to learn how to do too. Yep. Right. Um, how you can engage someone else's active listening, right? They say... Uh, what is it? The average person spends, uh, listens for approximately 17 seconds before they start 
their own conversation in their head and start preparing their responses. So if you can figure out how to overcome that in them um, and learn how to you know, get them to listen the whole time, that'd be a really good. Absolutely. Yeah, then there's a whole bunch of things. You got the tonality level, which is like, like the way you speak. And then you obviously got the physical uh, body languages. And then 85% of the time, people listen to your body language than they do with your tonality. And then, you know, yeah. tonality and the words at the very last. They don't care. You could say, my name is blah. It's the same word, but if you say, my name is Mark Kumar, you know, it's like the whole tonality thing. That's good. And if you say it with a gesture, people actually listen to it more. Pay yeah, absolutely. Um, and then did they, does he get into things like learning how to do mirroring and matching and that kind of stuff when you're in physical conversations? And a Absolutely. It's like when you were like, like, for example, I'll give you an example. Like if I first time I saw you, right, and if the way you're sitting and I saw you the very first time, I come next to you or sit across from you, the same way you are sitting by psychologically you want to build more trust in me just because i'm just like you as compared to mm -hmm. your few hands like this folding up and i have my hands on my cheek you're gonna be like this guy is different i don't want to talk to him. you know it's just like yeah, small yeah. small 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 transitions it builds the trust that's one and of my uh, my favorite things with that that those techniques is when you learn how to do them really really well and seamlessly you can take someone from defensive positions and you can actually get to move them into more open receptive positions um, over the course of a conversation, oh, yeah. which I mean, is, it, it it's like dangerous changed. almost. <laughs> it, that's what I was going to get. It's almost dangerous. And it does warn you, like the techniques is going to teach you, you have to swear by that you're not going to use it for evil because you could easily do it. I mean, you could easily influence literally anybody to do whatever. Yeah, I was like, and if you're familiar with this story, he absolutely did. <laughs> <laughs> literally yeah so yeah that yeah. was uh that was that was what the whole wolf of wall street was about yep so cool so my uh my next question for you here i sort of want to bring it home for our listeners and talk about your guiding principles top one or two actions or principles that you put into you put into uh um into action every day that you use that you think contribute to your success and your influence maybe something you wish you known when you first started out Oh, wow, that's a really good question. And I do mean that like, wow, that's a really good question. So one of the things that I can think of is like, if, if I were to start out again, I would say, talk to as many people as you can on a regular basis. So that way, once you start to talk to them, you, when I say talk to them, just, just don't talk to them, actually listen to what they're saying. Because when you start listening, they're going to start to tell you the problems and the issues they're having. And that's gonna be your golden opportunity to say, hey, maybe I should go focus on that. Let's say if you talk to 10, 10 people, out of the 10 people, five of them are gonna have the same issue, regardless of where you are. And you can potentially help them with that, yeah. One of, one of the, uh, the things that I really, really loved, um, I hired a sales trainer a number of years ago, um, cost me like $12,000 over the course of a year um, to work with this guy all year and one of the exercises he put me through was he gave me a list of strangers their phone numbers and whatnot and he was like i want you to call every single one of these people and he gave me a fun script that was that was essentially like hey you know my name's so and so i have your name here on a list in front of me can you tell me why i'm calling okay right because the uh the goal of the conversation was just to learn how to find people's problems like to actually listen to them and see what they're looking for um, and learn how to basically turn any conversation into, you know, helping find someone's actual issues or whatnot. And it was, it was really interesting because I, so I ended up calling like 200 people over the course of a week and it was just an exercise in learning how to do active listening um, and being able to pull out common problems and things like that. And it's funny because like it actually turned into business, which is funny because they're like, they were just random list of people. Yep. That's why like uh, telemarketing is like a huge business. <laughs> You know, people yeah. call you like randomly. We all get these calls once in a while. Like, wow, my God, don't these people have anything better to do? Yeah, they're making money. That's why they're calling. You may hang up. There might be 200 other people who will pick up. Like, oh, yeah, I have that problem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, so your, your recommendation is for people to just learn to talk to more people and then listen to what they're actually saying. Just, just keep your mouth, that's the best way I could put it. Just keep your mouth sealed. I don't want to share it, but keep your mouth sealed and just listen to what they're saying in three different ways. 
watch what they're saying, how they are communicating with you. Because if somebody's like this and they're saying it, they, then they're not really opening up to you, right? Number two, the way they are saying it. They might be saying, hey, yeah. when, like for example, if you ask me how you day, I'm like, my day is okay, you know, it's fine. Then at that point, you have the opportunity to cheer that person up. And that's all you need. Once you cheer mm -hmm. that person up, then they're going to open up and then you get to ask them. And yeah. number three is like the words. The words are the last thing. But listen to what they're saying in terms of physical appearance and their tonality. Yeah. I, uh, one of my uh, mentors growing up always used to say your goal should always be to leave the person or the place or wherever you're at. Leave it better than you found it. Right. right. And if you, uh, if you are listening, you have the opportunity to uh, leave that person better than you found them. Yeah. So... And, cool. And another thing I want to add on to that, not, sorry, I, like far as when you are listening, just turn off the conversation that's happening in your mind. Because if you're in a sales presentation, you're like, hey, uh, how do I get this guy to buy my stuff? Or how do I get this guy to close? Or blah, 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 blah. If all those things are there, an average smart person is going to pick that up in a second. And then there goes the person. So we'll just turn the conversation yeah, yeah. off. So you, <laughs> I tell people all the time, you have to, you have to genuinely care. You can't fake it, right? You have to actually care about improving that person's life and getting them results and doing those things. Um, Cause if you don't, um, people will pick up on it, right? They'll pick up on all those, what is it? 80% of that communication that is less than what you said. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, especially in the information age that we live in, people are a lot smarter compared to the people who are living in the 1800s. You know, we are a lot more smarter and they'll pick up in mm -hmm. half a second, depending on which state you live in our country, especially in New York, half a second, we'll get you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's even worse now with, uh, with texting. Like you can tell when someone texts weird and you're like, oh, there's was something off about that text. <laughs> exactly. Uh, right? So it's, it's pretty amazing. So my, uh, um, that basically wraps up the interview, but I do have one more thing we do at the, the end of all of our um, episodes, something I call the Heroes Challenge. Heroes Challenge is pretty simple. Um, and it's basically this, do you have someone in your life or in your network that you think has a cool entrepreneurial story? Who are they? First names are fine. And why do you think they should come share their story with our audience? I'm trying to think. Wow, who could that be? Uh, I can think of Jim. He's probably pretty cool. He has his own podcast. He interviews like other podcasters, but he is somebody who I can only, he's the only one I could think of at the moment who would be a great ideal person who can come on your show. Like, so, okay. So why do you think, uh, why do you think he, his story would be good to come share? Uh, because he's, he's a goal getter and he is, he's the person that I know like in, person I know he will go out of his way until he gets what he wants I mean he worked like almost every single day in terms of getting his podcasting getting his other business going on and then making money and obviously right that, like, in, in short he's the only one that I can think of like will be a great fit for you awesome so We'll reach out later and see if we can get his contact information for now. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Mark. Really appreciate it. Where can people find you if they're interested in, uh, in your services? Um, and then second to that, and probably more important is who are the right types of people to reach out? Uh, people can find me just by go to my website, which is Mark kumar.com i'll spell that out for you guys it's m-a-r-k-k-u-m-a-r.com and also thank you for listening to the show i have a special gift for you which you can get at markkumar.com forward slash gift go there get that i can guarantee you it's going to definitely help your business out and what was the other question <laughs> who are the type, right types of people to reach out for your services uh the people who are actually serious about getting results they have gotten tired of getting these working with these other people who didn't get them resolved. If you know what you want, I'm the guy who's going to get you there, not just get you there, but you get you there faster. If you're in the world of creating digital uh, online business, I'm the one who's going to get you there a lot faster. If you're interested in creating your own product, I can tell you exactly what you need to do to create your product 
for your ideal clients a lot faster. Whether it be your digital product, whether it be your online course, whether it be a membership site, those things I know very well because I have done this for my business and other clients who I have worked with. If those are the things you are looking for, I'm the guy. I'm going to get you there a lot faster. And that's that. Awesome. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. If you're listening now, make sure you check out markkumar.com or markkumar.com forward slash gift to pick up the uh, gift he's got for any of our listeners there. Um, and if you are looking to create a digital product, reach out to him. Um, again, Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. You got any, any final words of wisdom before we hit this stop record button? Uh, first of all, Richard, thank you so much for having me on your show. I truly appreciate it. And I hopefully I have added a lot of value to people who are listening to the show. The only last words I can think of is, hey, guys, if you truly want what you if you truly know what you want, you can definitely get there because the way I look at it, you can get there by keep on trying. And then one day you will succeed sooner or later. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate it.